I have a ball of soft white polymer clay, which is plastic based, and I'm going to make a Henry Moore type sculpture out of it. I'm keeping it in this plastic bag to stop hairs and dust collecting on it. Although it won't dry out, it will never dry out. So this is what I have in the bag here. So I'm just taking it out of the bag and working on a dust-free surface. Now you may have noticed that I put a hole already in the ball of clay. It feels quite firm, but if you stick your thumb or finger in it and then press, eventually it will give way and it will create a hole like this. So this is a basic hole. I'm going to develop the hole by creating, so pressing in, it works quite slowly, by pressing a, a channel around the hole to create a more complex hole. So that we've started off with a basic hole and now I'm using my fingers to press quite firmly into the soft polymer clay. This is oven baked clay. You can, you can bake it in the oven to make it hard or you can just leave it semi tacky like this and it can like plasticine create lots of different things out of it. So I'm just widening the um, hole and making one side sort of lower than the other. You can see I've, I've widened it. I'm also going to maybe make the hole kind of a more complex shape so it's not just round. So there we are. I've squashed the clay and now I've got a sloping channel dip that goes into the hole. Don't make it too deep at this point. So now I've got a raised, a raised lip almost going around the clay. Now we're going to try and make a more complex shape, a bit like an ear. So I'm going to maybe put another ridge in the center of this clay. So we want it more in a more unusual shape like an ear. So I'm putting another ridge inside uh, as you get many ridges, maybe push and distort this hole. And the more I handle this soft clay, polymer, oven drying clay, um, which is plastic based, so it will never dry out. I don't need to use water with it. Um, the more easier it is to bend and manipulate. So you see, I've already got a really unusual shape here. So I can press down a bit further, maybe on just one side. We don't, we're looking for a shape that's not symmetrical. Maybe pull this one out a little bit further. So now we've got a very unusual shape hole or dip. If you want to smoothen it out with this uh, plastic clay, you have to be careful because if you press too hard it will move. You might want to support it on the other side with another finger as you softly manipulate it. You don't want to end up with lots of um, fingerprints. So you see that it's looking quite smooth now. So once you've made one shape, I might make a ridge over here. You can then move on to your second shape or dip or hole. So I've got, well, that's one. Don't worry about the rest of the clay at the moment. So I'm gonna go for another hole. So I'm gonna press quite firmly Don't make it too big, because if you make it too big and go down halfway through the clay, you'll compromise how much you can go through on the other side. So 
So I'm just going to smoothen this out. Hold the um, clay in your hands and you can work with it very carefully. If you do put it on the table, just make sure that it doesn't become flat on one side because we want it to have a kind of smooth shape all the way around. So I'm just going to, I've made a, a dip there and now I'm going to make a channel, pressing with my thumb because it's quite strong. You can use any finger, but the thumb's quite strong. So I'm using that. This clay's very firm, but this is the soft clay. You don't want the firm clay. This is the soft clay. I think it costs about between nine. It's quite expensive, between nine and 12 pounds on Amazon for this amount of clay. But this will last a long time. If you don't oven, put it in the oven and bake it, um, you can make lots of things out of it. So I'm just going to create this shape. Now I want this, this is just like a donut at the moment. I want it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to pinch, carefully pinch one side of it. If I pinch my fingers together like this and press down, I can create a kind of sharper ridge or just go over with one side, pull a sharper edge, okay, a sharp edge. My fingers feel quite sticky, but don't worry, you can always wash your hands afterwards, get rid of the sticky feeling. I think I'll make a ridge with my fingers on this side. So I'm kind of, I've got a spiral type shape here, which is starting to form. Be careful not to squish the other side, the shape once you've formed it. The more complex your shape is, the more difficult it is not to, not to change and squash the other side a lot. Now, I'm got, now that I've got two shapes, I'm gonna think about how I can link and connect them. So I've already got a ridge here. I might continue that to connect the two shapes. So that they're connecting, they flow, the flow, the shape flows and connects around the form. Now, some of the ridges on this can be quite um, narrow and sharp, but don't make them too extended at this point. Keep them quite low. Don't pull them out. Pull, pull, pull them out too thin and extended. So I'm keeping it quite low. So this shape then curves around. What you're aiming for is control. The first thing really, this is like a, I'm not worried about the um, shape of the whole sculpture. What I'm trying to do at the moment, this is a test ground to help control the clay and so that I can show that I can shape it without it squishing around all over the place, having lots of fingerprints. You don't wanna start making a final shape until you can show that you've got the control. Really, the most important thing at the moment is control and smoothening out the, the surface. So once you've made two shapes that are kind of connecting and you've shown that you've got control and you can smoothen the clay, 
without the shapes getting larger and larger and there's a connecting flow between the shapes, the, the edges flow and connect. So this one connects to this part. I can then start making more shapes around the clay. So then I might make one over here. Press down with two fingers and shape in that. And you just work your way around the clay like this, but always look at what you've previously made. And if it does get squashed, you can always reshape it and then change it to make an even better uh, form. So I'm always looking at what I've got, keeping it nice and smooth. So I'm now going to carry on and make some more shapes until I've covered the whole surface. But it could take quite some time. So I'm just going to pull this. And the more you handle it, the warmer the plastic, this plastic, almost like plasticine, uh, the softer it becomes. So you have to hold it really gently with your fingertips so that you're not squishing it with your hand as you turn it around in the palm of your hand while you're working on it. 